Hello everybody and welcome to your 34th chapter in your Java E7 tutorial series. In this tutorial we'll be talking about how to run all the examples of enterprise Java beans. To provide a quick refresher on EJBs, they are simply a powerful way to encapsulate business logic within an application. Like I said in the previous episode, they can be accessed from remote Java clients, web service clients, and components running in the same server. All right, so I threw a lot of gibberish at you. Let's take a look at what it means. So in the last episode, we created a stateless session bean name named converter bean together. This episode will go over four more types of session beans. Our cart bean, a stateful session bean that is accessed by a remote client. Our counter bean, which is a simple singleton session bean. A hello service bean, a stateless session bean that implements a web service, and then finally a timer session bean, which is a stateless session bean that sets a timer. All right, getting right into it, let's take a look into our card bean. Now that we're jumped into our NetBeans, let's go ahead and right click and click open project. Inside here, all you got to do is navigate to your examples and go down to your EJB. The first guy you want to look at is your cart example. Over here, you can double click your cart and you will see, first of all, you'll see a few modules and let's go ahead and open these guys up. First, let's look at our cart common and over here, you will see a few things. You can go ahead into your source packages and open up into your EJB. The first guy we want to take a look at is our business interface. Unless otherwise specified over here, you can see that it's remote instead of local. So the business interface basically defines all the methods that your classes will need to uh, implement. For example, in this case, since it's a cart, all we got to do is add a book, remove a book, get the contents of the books and remove any books. Okay, so let's take a look at into our utility classes. These are our helper classes. First is our book exception, which takes in any, like if there's any problem with uh, like the transaction or something like this exception will be thrown. And then there's our ID verifier, which is a verification. So these two helper classes, which we'll be calling them are basically as a whole, they help out with tricky verifications and validations. All right. So now that you got that, let's close this guy up and let's go to our cart EJB. If we double click this guy, you can see that our source package inside EJB, you will see cart bean dot Java inside here. You can see that this is our session bean class. It is annotated with an at stateful, as you can see over here, stating that this session bean will be a stateful session bean. It implements the business methods defined in the business interface. Like we've shown before, this is our business interface and it's implementing our cart which then goes ahead and um, implements them. So this is our method that you saw over here in cart, remove book, get contents and remove. Okay. So uh, finally, the primary purpose of this bean is to run business tasks for the client. All right, enough of me rambling. Let's go ahead and get right into this code. All you got to do in this case is start your glass server, which in my case, it has started already. And you can go ahead and click build. So once again, this example represents a shopping cart in an online bookstore and uses a stateful session bean to manage the operations of the shopping cart. The client's uh, beans client can add a book to the cart, remove a book or retrieve the cart's contents. So now that you get that, let's go right into our, our build log. If you scroll a little bit up, let's see. All right. So you can see that we have an output of the following. We get, we retrieved the book title. We retrieved the book title from the cart and retrieved another book title. And then we removed this book from the cart and then we caught a book exception. All right. So that's all there is about this cart um, example. Now that we're finished with that, let's go into our counter bean example. Okay. So we have a lot over here, so let's clean these guys up. Let's go ahead and actually let's go ahead and uh, close this guy, close this guy and close him. Okay. So counter example, let's open our project and double click counter. So this demonstrates how to create a singleton session bean 
And you can see how a singleton session mean is super useful, especially when you want to make sure that um, when you're counting stuff like money, you want to make sure that um, the number that's shown on the website is actually accurate. And because like you don't want people to think like, hey, like I saw there was a hundred dollars in my bank account. Why? Uh, why was it like um, why was it discharged? Like, why was I not allowed to take it? So uh, you'll see how it actually works out. The first one we want to take a look at is our counter bean, which is our singleton session bean. This is the the king of the entire thing. All it's doing right here is, first of all, specifying that it's a singleton bean. It's uh it's managed by the container. So basically, um, concurrency management means that uh the container manages the reading and writing of this class's methods, and finally, this at lock annotation. What this does is it tells the um, this method that, hey, I'm being used right now. You can't access me right now until I'm done with my method being used. Let's say we have two containers, right? Or let's say we have two clients and they want to access this method. Well, only one client can access this method at a time, right? So let's say one client asks for this method and he gets it. And another client asks for this method again, but it's locked. That's what this lock annotation does. It basically makes sure that whenever you get the hits over here, uh, it will only like annotate for one single request. Okay, so next we got our index.xhtml, which is super simple. All it's doing is this is our, well, to navigate to it, all you got to do is index.html. And this is just our facelets that you already know what this is. If you don't, you can check out my previous episodes. But all it's saying is this page is being accessed this number of times. And we got our count.java, which is our simple EJB, which is simply like a get and set like hub. It's telling us it gets the hit count and it sets the hit count. All right. So now that you got that, let's go ahead and make sure that your Glassware server is running and go ahead and click build. Once it's up and running, let's go ahead and uh, run it. Okay, so what you will see here is that it, it says this page has been accessed one time. And then it says, hooray. Um, if you go ahead and refresh it, it will keep iterating this number. Three, four, five. Even if you go ahead and go into another web page, it will still keep this number. Seven. And if you re refresh this, this will become eight, nine and so on and so on. This is the power of singleton session bean. Even if I were possibly to refresh these at the same time, these numbers will not get like, uh, like each iteration will not be lost. That's basically what I'm trying to say. All right, counter bean finished. Let's go into our hello service bean. Okay, so counter, let's go ahead and close him. And let's open our project of our hello service bean. So this example demonstrates a simple web service that generates the response based on information received from the client. So the only guy I want to take a look at is our hello service bean, which is our endpoint implementation class. This is a web service. If you don't understand what web services are, go ahead and take a look at my previous tutorials. But all this is doing is it's a simple web service. All that's different is it's a stateless enterprise bean. Okay, so you should be, um, you should understand what uh, this hello service is basically doing. I mean, we saw an example before. So let's get right into this example. All right, so uh, to go into this, it's kind of a little, little bit different. Uh, your Glassware server should be started. And let's go ahead and right click and go into view domain admin console. Over here, let's close these guys. Uh, you want to go into your application node right over here and you can click on your hello service. Once you click that, you can see there's something called view endpoint. Go ahead and click it. And what you want to do is click this link right here that has an, uh, like a, like a, what do you call it? Like a, like a suffix that's tester. Go into that and you want to pick the one that has HTTP, not HTTPS, don't pick this. Pick this one, the first one. And what this is doing is it's going into this through a web service, basically like a website, like you're going through this link, right? And then you're going to here. 
So you can go ahead and say hello. This is literally the same thing. All it's doing is it's taking this and it's putting it in its enterprise bean. Say hello, and it will give you your method parameters, the method returned, hello Viprov, and the SOAP interaction, what's going on in the background. So let's quickly go into our last example, our timer session bean. All right, so let's go ahead and close this once again and open our project. Inside here, you will find timer session. So this is, uh, it's a long description. So let's get right, uh, let's, let me talk about it. So applications in the business model often need to have timed notifications. The timer service of the enterprise bean container enables you to schedule timed notifications for all types of enterprise beans, except for stateful session beans. You can schedule a time notification to occur according to a calendar schedule at a specific time after a duration of time or at timed intervals. For example, you can set timers to go off at, let's say, 1030 a.m. on May 23rd in 30 days or even every 24 hours. So there are two types of enterprise bean timers. There are programmatic timers, which are the which they they just explicitly call one of the timer creation methods of the timer service interface. And then there's automatic timers, which is the successful deployment of an enterprise bean that contains a method annotated with the at scheduled or at schedules annotations. Okay, so I threw a lot at you. And you probably didn't understand like what I said. So let's let's take a few examples into consideration. What you'll see over here is our timer session bean, which is simply first starting up. And all it's doing is it's, it sets the timer, for example, the programmatic timeout that you set, and it goes ahead and creates a new programmatic timer. And every time it does that, it logs setting a programmatic timeout for this milliseconds from now on. Then there's automatic timers, which schedule it for every minute. So every minute it will log into your stuff and it will say that automatic timeout occurred. Okay, so uh, the thing I wanna take a look at next is our EJB. And inside here, you can see that it's just a load of setters and getters. That's basically it. All right, so now, um, now that you got that, let's go ahead and build it. Of course, you wanna make sure that your Glassdoor server is running before, but in our case it is, so let's build it right ahead. Now that our build is successful, let's go into our glass server. Um, or sorry, uh, you can go ahead, right click and click run. And you will find that the timer page, you have a programmatic timeout, which is the timeout that you set and the automatic timeout, the timeout that you set inside your uh, NetBeans. So you can set a programmatic timer here, all right? And you can set the timer. Uh, and you can see that timer is, timeout is this. This is the automatic timeout. And we can refresh it, refresh it again. And you can see that only after the set amount of time, which is eight seconds, if you see over here. Yep, so our timeout durations, this is 8,000 milliseconds. Uh, only after that time, it will uh, refresh. So if we refresh again, and so that's it. That's all there is about this programmatic timeout and the automatic timeout. And that will wrap it up for today's tutorial, everybody. Um, I hope you understood what Enterprise Beans can do now. Because uh, before I told you what they're doing, right? Now you actually saw what they can do. They can basically like take in your business logic and then um, amplify it up and make it super simple and make it easy on the users that use up your applications. It can count up stuff by using singleton session beans. It can demonstrate how to use a simple web service in our hello service example. And it demonstrates how to use time notifications. So for example, if you want to know a notification, notification <laughs> if you want to notify your um like clients at a certain time every single day you can do that with enterprise beans right so now that you understood that the next thing we're going to take a look at is embedded enterprise bean containers it's a long name but it's real simple and you will see it in the next chapter until then i will see you in the next video